Blech. We know that Glenn Danzig is a lot of things, guys. He is a lot of things. He's a musician. He's a singer. He's a songwriter. He plays guitar, bass, drums. He plays the piano. He's a composer. He is a writer. He is a director. He is an actor. He was a record label owner and runner. He's a graphic artist. He's a photographer. And he does illustration. He runs a comic book company. He's an art dealer. For better or for worse, he does it all. It's really kind of weird to think that Glenn Danzig was also a movie critic. That's right. Glenn Danzig, for a period of time in the early 80s, wrote these tiny little movie blurb reviews for Flipside Magazine. Ugh. If you don't know what this one is, what the fuck you doing here? The Gore Gore Girls. This is a long, out-of-circulation Herschel Gordon-Lewis gem. The Gore Gore Girls started doing these midnight stints in New York City and possibly in your town. It is my personal favorite of all Herschel Gordon-Lewis's movies. And besides some sickening gore, you also get one of the most hilarious romps through blood and guts you'll ever see. It's about a disfigured killer who goes around murdering the faces of strippers since the maniac's tragic accident she can no longer strip due to bodily scars. If this comes to your town and you miss it, you'll regret it. It's funny. He, he says this is one of his favorite H.G. Lewis films, but he wrote a song about Blood Feast and not the Gorgo Girls. But you could imagine a Glenn Danzig song go, Gorgo Girls, oh, Gorgo Girls. Oh, God. No, it would be like, it would be like, go, it would be like, go. I don't know. How would that work? It would, it would work. Somehow it would work. So that's how he saw it in New York City in 1982. So what would happen was, you got to own that. This is really interesting situation. Check this out. Little history here. Again, I love re reveling in the idea of like the pre-internet age. Imagine before VHS was widely in circulation, how did you see a movie after its first run? You had to go and check it in a second run house. You had to catch it at a midnight screening, or you had to maybe if you had like an HBO, if it's that depending on what time it is in the 80s, if you have HBO, they might be playing like Return of the Living Dead again, that sort of thing. Or you could rent a VCR and you could rent your VHS at a premium price and do that as well. But it was not easy to see all the films. Think about all the films that are coming out on Blu-ray for the first time now, all the obscure titles. And think they were all made in the 60s, 70s, and 80s and played on runs. And that's the other thing, too, is that movie theaters would, would, would rent films and, and play. You'd get a package. You could see three films, you know, to do a triple feature or a double feature with two grindhouse films or B films, whatever. And that's what, you know, again, going back to Times Square or the Waverly Theater on 8th Street in the village. That's how you would go and see stuff. So that's how Glenn is seeing these things that... Frankly, he could not probably rent on VHS back in the day. Something Weird Video put out a lot of Herschel Gordon Lewis, but also Arrow Video put out a Herschel Gordon Lewis box set that's like super expensive, but it's got all the treats. I caught DC Cab on HBO at midnight at the time. All time favorite, just saying. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You would have the movie on the week. You had Chiller Theater. Like this, this was. The only way, the Saturday night movie or the Sunday matinee film on WPIX, Channel 11. You know what I mean? This is how you saw all these titles. I remember growing up, that was how I would watch movies for the first time or on TBS or Sci-Fi Channel or whatever. Well, there was also video. You could rent stuff on VHS as well. That's that, that's a little, because I'm a child of the 90s. I'm a weird age. It's a weird age. I'm 35. I'm born in 85, right? So I grew up with an analog childhood for the most part. We did have computers, but we still watched things on VHS. We still taped off the radio. You know, we made mixtapes. We also bought CDs. But I didn't have the really truly have, I did have the internet. We had the internet. We had AOL. I was not born with the internet. A lot of us were not born with the internet. So it's like I've had, I, I, so I feel like I'm, straddling these two generations you know it's just i was born at a really like on the cusp the cusp of time hell yeah i remember going to theaters back then five dollars for like five films mainly b movies right and rue and that's how you could get exposed to all sorts of stuff you know what i mean 
Uh, on the West Coast, we had Saturday Nightmares on USA in the mid eighties. Exactly. There's so many different shows like that. And on the East Coast, it was Chiller Theater was one of them. USA up all night. And then on TNT, we had Monster Vision. Who remembers Monster Vision with Joe Bob Briggs? That's how I saw The Monster Club, one of my all-time favorite films that I will never stop championing for the rest of my days. We used to watch Elvira's movie Macabre. Didn't give a damn about the movie she was reviewing. We were just hoping she would fall out of her dress. Yeah, I would, I would imagine so. 